Let's calculate consumer surplus and this market defected here if there happens to be a price ceiling imposed on the market. Right? So remember the first thing that you always want to ask yourself when you're analyzing a market like this and there's a price ceiling or a price floor is to ask is this price ceiling or price floor binding? All right? Now a price ceiling is binding if the price ceiling is set below the equilibrium price. And a price floor is binding if it is set above the equilibrium price, right? Um, okay, so what's going on in this market is that the equilibrium price where the market would tend towards uh, is, it happens to be $20, right? You, you see this, the demand curve, the demand curve, and the demand curve, and the supply curve here. And they meet at this point here, and that suggests that the equilibrium price would be $20 in this market if there were no restrictions imposed on the market. All right. So that's what the that's what so 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 $20 is the price that the, that the market would tend towards in equilibrium. But like I said, in this market there happens to be a $10 price ceiling, right? Which means that price the price can't go above $10, which means that that equilibrium price of $20 it would actually be illegal, right? You you, you can't charge that price. And so prices will tend to want to rise, but then they'll, then they'll get stuck at $10 because they can't legally be above $10. So this would actually be a binding price ceiling, right? So a $10 price ceiling in a market where the equilibrium price would be $20, that's going to be a binding price ceiling. Okay. Uh, so, so that's going to be the, the uh, actual price in the market, uh, since it's going to be the highest price that it could be, right? There's $10. So now what we want to do is find the consumer surplus. Remember, that's, that's what we're trying to find. We're trying to find the consumer surplus in this market where there's a $10 price ceiling. Okay, now remember, the price ceiling, sorry, the consumer surplus, a way to measure it is just looking at the demand curve and, 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 and finding the area below the demand curve and above the price for everything up to the quantity uh, consumed, right? And if there's if there's a ten dollar price ceiling, then that means that the actually the, the quantity supplied is only going to be ten units of whatever good this is, and so people are only going to be able to buy ten units. So that means that 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 we want to look at everything under the demand curve and above the price up to that quantity of ten, which uh, people are going to be able to buy. Right? Nobody's going to want to supply the other ten units that and get us to the equilibrium quantity of twenty, because uh, they can't charge a high enough price in order to uh, make it profitable to 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 sell those, right? Uh, so th so that means consumer surplus is going to be this tra this uh, trapezoid shape here, right? Which uh, we could break it up into this triangle up here up next to the demand curve, right? There's a triangle there, and there's actually two rectangles, which actually should be squares, but the way I've drawn it, they look like rectangles. Uh, and, and if we add those up, then they're going to be the same as the entire trapezoid, which represents consumer surplus here. Right? So breaking it up, we can find uh, the dimensions of this triangle. Well, it's $10, uh, one, the, the vertical dimension, and then the horizontal dimension is 10 units. So that means that the area of this triangle is going to be 1 half 10 by 10, which is 50. Right? So the area of the triangle is 50. And then each of these squares or rectangles, they are $10 by 10 units, $10 by 10 units. So they're both 100. So that tells us that consumer surplus in this market would be $250 when this $10 price ceiling is imposed. All right.